Welcome to the Half-Ass Homestead. I'm inviting you to come along and spend a whole day off on the homestead with me. A typical morning off doesn't start any bit later than a work day does. Um, I typically get up at about four and I grab a cup of coffee, settle down on the recliner with Chuck and start editing my video for the vlog for the week. Once I'm done with that, then I get to regular homestead chores, like feeding the chicks and letting everybody out to go free range. I like getting out in the garden as early as humanly possible. It is a lot cooler and there's just a certain stillness in the morning that's unmatched by any other time of the day. It's really my favorite time to go out and do my harvesting. It's getting later into fall and all of the harvesting is starting to pick up. It's such a busy time of year. Dealing with the harvest from the garden, watching your weeds get away from you while you prepare for winter. But oddly enough, if you're anything like me, as soon as the garden comes to a close, you're looking forward to next year. Buying seeds in December and January, planning out a garden starting in February and planting all of the seeds just to start it all over again and that's kind of what some of us homesteaders live for one of the biggest august struggles is working through and preserving the harvest figuring out how you're going to preserve everything isn't always the easiest task Especially like in the beginning of the season when you have small harvests like this one today. A couple heads of cauliflower, a handful of peppers, and it's really not a whole lot. And there's not enough to really do anything with. Regardless, the first place to start is get them in a nice cool bath of water, wash them up, and get the heat soaked off them. Obviously, one of our favorite ways to preserve cucumbers is through pickling, and we do a lot of refrigerator pickles. I have an amazing recipe for spicy sweet dills. They're not too spicy, and they're not very sweet, but there's a sweetness, and I think they're delicious. When it comes to, like, these snacking peppers and cherry tomatoes, I will make myself a snack tray every single day for work. And if I'm not having my cherry tomatoes on a snack tray, I am dehydrating them for sun-dried tomatoes, which are incredibly expensive in the store. And they make such a nice addition to dishes throughout the winter. And right now I am processing up these amazing tomatoes I found. They're called tear and paste tomatoes and they are a hybrid from Johnny C. They are so dry, they're going to make making tomato sauce an absolute breeze this winter. And here we have a nice bunch of turnips. There's just enough to make one nice dish of roasted turnips for dinner one night. So I'm just going to peel them and quarter them and put them in the freezer. Just picked some carrots for myself and Andy for our snacks for the week. Andy loves carrots. Our favorite method of preservation for cauliflower and broccoli is to blanch and freeze it. If you are blanching and freezing in any capacity, it is 100% a must to have a blancher. It is so, so much more efficient than just a boiling pot of water and starting over with every single batch. Uh, 
on to freezing some egg muffins that we made. Um, we had an abundance of eggs and I felt like making them. And what kitchen chores aren't complete without doing some dishes and cleaning up the counter. We have a hookup for some raw milk and it just so happens that yesterday we got it and today I get to make butter with the cream. If there's anything that I can tell you, it's that if you have the ability to obtain raw milk, do it. There's so many health benefits to it despite what the government may tell you. And it tastes so much better than pasteurized milk. I can't say the same for this horrid, horrid cereal. The tiny human loves it, but it tastes kind of like cardboard and sugar. I do not recommend. Turned around for 45 seconds. When your butter starts to clump up, you need to be paying attention because it will turn into one clump very quickly and make a huge mess. I'm not always the best at watching for it. When it comes to butter, it's best eaten fresh, but when you don't need it right now, the best thing you can do is just give it a freeze and it'll still be plenty delicious. But I tell you, homemade butter is probably the most delicious butter you will ever have. And personally, we decide not to salt, but if you'd like to salt, like right after you rinse it that's when you add your salt in and that's how you make salted butter like with anything we process we try to waste as little as possible food scraps go to the chickens and all of the dairy that we process, there are a lot of byproducts that we do not use, like the whey protein from yogurt and the buttermilk from making butter, which we give to our dogs with their food. And it's really good for them. And I would say it's probably about, at this point, 10 a.m. And that's when I am getting outside to start with the rest of my outside chores. Today, it is finishing up our electric fence to protect the bees. While I was inside working through our harvest, Andy was out in the garage working on an attachment for the three point on the International. This attachment is going to dig us a trench and bury the electric fence wire from the garden to the apiary. And we're going to see how this thing works. Spending too much time watching the trench digger do its thing and not enough time watching where he's driving. By no means am I saying I wouldn't do the same thing. I am, however, saying I didn't do it.
There are two primary threats to your honeybees, and that is bear and skunk. Your fence needs to be tall enough to deter bear and low enough to deter a skunk. So we decided to put under our fence, weed barrier, and then mulch over the top of it. I'm gonna let you in on this little secret. Feathers are a great insulator and does not deter chickens very easily from digging up said mulch. I think we're gonna have to switch to gravel. One of the highlights of my day is our evening walk around the homestead. We'll take a drink and walk through the orchard, look at the asparagus and blueberries and walk the trails that Andy keeps maintained. It's a wonderful way to just decompress, relax, and enjoy some of that hard, hard work that we do which makes it all worth it. One of our last tasks of the day is to feed and water the chickens. Though we make sure they have water throughout the day, we don't feed them in the morning. Willie will just eat all their food. They're also outside free ranging, so it doesn't make too much sense to have their food dish all full all day. And giving them that feed in the evening also helps draw them a little bit closer to the coop. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it gets them into the mindset like, I'll just hit the roost and be good for the day. The necessary homesteading evil is the copious amounts of dishes that need to be done. We're blessed enough to have a dishwasher, which it's a love-hate relationship for me. I have my entire life not had a dishwasher and I kind of don't like waiting for them but the counter is too small to be doing all these dishes by hand all of the time. I still do a brunt by hand. One of my favorite minor tasks is putting eggs into the carton. I like seeing the colorful egg basket that I have curated. It makes me smile. And it wouldn't be an August vlog if I didn't have BLTs to serve for dinner because tis the season where it's BLTs every other night. Tomatoes, lettuce, bacon, you cannot go wrong. You just simply cannot. Most nights, um, mosquito levels permitting, we like to eat our dinner on the back porch. We hardly use our dining room table in the summer. And that might be because we have such an amazing view that it'd be a shame to waste it, wouldn't it? While well, we enjoy this view, I hope you guys enjoy this blooper reel. for 45 seconds.